Hello and welcome to Archie Corner. This is episode number 57. In this video, we will discuss the requirements and allowances for a mezzanine, and we will also touch on some of the differences between a mezzanine and a story. So let's jump right into it. First, let's look at IBC section 505.2. There are a few things we can get from this section. As we read, we can find the following. A mezzanine shall be considered a portion of the story below. Such mezzanine shall not contribute to the number of stories regulated by section 503.1. What does this mean? In short, a mezzanine is not considered a separate story. Why is this important? To answer this, we must go through the basic process of figuring out what is allowed for stories and mezzanines. For this example, let's assume that we have a Type 5B building with an occupancy group classification of B. It is used for office and it is sprinklered. First, let's find out how many stories a regular building with these requirements is allowed. If we look at the section noted in the code we just read, section 503.1, in part, this code section states, number of stories shall not exceed the limit specified in section 504. So let's do that. Let's look at IBC table 504.4 titled number of stories. Given the building information noted above, the allowed number of stories is three. So let's draw a section of a three-story building. Here, we have a building that, as per table 504.4, is three stories. This is where a mezzanine can be useful because we could technically have a three-story building and within that building, we could have mezzanines. For example, we could add a mezzanine to the second floor as shown here. And as you may remember, section 505.2, which we see here again, states that a mezzanine shall be considered a portion of the story below. Going back to our example, we can see that this mezzanine is still part of the second floor. It is not a separate story. Now, let's move to the second portion of code section 505.2. In this same section, 505.2, it states, such mezzanine shall not contribute to the building area as regulated by section 503.1. The question again, what does this mean? To answer that, let's note that once again, this code references section 503.1 and section 503.1 references section 506. So let's look at table 506.2. Using the same building specifications we have been using in our example thus far, Table 506.2 states that a Type 5B sprinklered multi-story building can have up to 27,000 square feet per floor. Let's assume that we are maximizing the size of our building. For this, we assume that each floor is 27,000 square feet. Having a mezzanine is an advantage because even if our second floor is already maxed out, and is already 27,000 square feet, we can still add a mezzanine because as we learned in section 505.2, a mezzanine does not contribute to the building area regulated by 503.1. And as a reminder, section 503.1 references section 506, which we have already looked at and confirmed that we are allowed 27,000 square feet. Now, you might be wondering, well, if the square footages of a mezzanine do not count towards the allowed square footage of the floor, is there a limit to how large a mezzanine can be? And well, of course there is. Duh. Section 505.2.1, titled Area Limitation, states in part, the aggregate area of a mezzanine or mezzanines within a room shall be not greater than one third of the floor area of that room or space in which they are located. The enclosed portion of a room shall not be included in a determination of the floor area of the room in which the mezzanine is located. So let's break that down. First, 
Notice that the area of the mezzanine is based on the square footage of the room in which it is located, not the size of the entire area of the story. Let's assume that the size of the room this mezzanine is located in is 5,000 square feet. I emphasize that we are talking about the room, not the entire second floor. In this case, our mezzanine can be 5,000 times 33%, which equals 1,667 square feet. But let's look at the code again. It states that the enclosed portion of a room shall not be included in the determination of the floor area of the room in which the mezzanine is located. What does this mean? Let's assume that we have an enclosed set of rooms underneath the mezzanine. That will obviously take area away from our 5,000 square feet. And let's say that the enclosed area takes up 1,000 square feet. That would mean that our room is actually 4,000 square feet. And that would in turn reduce the allowable size of our mezzanine. Instead of being allowed to be up to 1,667 square feet, we would only be allowed to have a mezzanine that is 4,000 times 33%, which equals 1,333 square feet. And just to make sure we cover the entire section, the code also states that in determining the allowable mezzanine area, the area of the mezzanine shall not be included in the floor area of the room. In other words, using our example, we cannot state that the square footage of our room is 1,333 plus 4,000 square feet because the mezzanine cannot be part of the base number used to determine its own size. Also, have in mind that the total area of the mezzanine cannot exceed the allowance. What this means is that we can have multiple mezzanines, not just one, but the total square footage cannot exceed the allowable. That is why at the beginning of section 505.2, it states a mezzanine or mezzanines because you can have more than just one. Now that we discussed how this affects the number of stories and the allowed building area, let's talk about other items that a mezzanine is required to comply with. Let's talk about the required ceiling height. Ceiling heights are referenced in a couple of places. If we first look at IBC section 1003.2, ceiling height, this code states that the means of egress shall have a height of not less than 7 feet 6 inches above the finished floor. However, there is exception number 8, which states that areas above and below mezzanine floors can comply with section 505.2. And guess what? We've already looked at section 505.2. But looking at section 505.2 again, it states that the clear height above and below the mezzanine floor construction shall be not less than 7 feet. So, going back to our example, if we had a mezzanine, the ceiling heights would be required to be 7 feet minimum. However, the office next door, if it had a T-bar drop-down ceiling, it would need to be a minimum of 7 foot 6 because it is not a mezzanine. So that is another difference between a mezzanine and story requirements. Now that we have covered height requirements, let's talk about the number of exits required for a mezzanine. Normally, the number of exits for a story are based on IBC section 1006.3.3. But remember, per IBC 505.2, a mezzanine is not considered a story. It is a portion of the story below. Therefore, we need to instead look at it as a space within a story. That is why the number of exits required for mezzanines are based on IBC section 1006.2 titled Egress from Spaces. More specifically, IBC section 1006.2.1, which is titled egress based on occupant load and common path of egress travel distance. Which in short, this code section states that the number of exits is based solely on occupant load and the travel distance noted on table 1006.2.1. Therefore, 
As long as you don't exceed the occupant load on the table or the travel distance, you are not required to provide two exits. In our example, office spaces are considered business areas. And since business areas are to be calculated at one occupant per 150 square feet per table 1004.5, and assuming our mezzanine is 1,333 square feet, then we have nine occupants once we round up. If you want to learn more on how to calculate occupant loads, check out Archie Corner episode number 10. As you may recall, when we looked at code section 1006.2.1, it stated that two exits or exit access doorways from any space shall be provided where the design occupant load or the common path of egress travel distance exceeds the values listed in table 1006.2.1. Because of that, let's take a look at this table to see if we need two exits. This table is a little misleading as it is titled Spaces with One Exit or Exit Access Doorway. In other words, what this table is really showing us is the maximums allowed for spaces with one exit. One of those maximums is occupant load. If we exceed these occupant loads, we no longer comply with these table's maximums and we need to provide two exits. If you would like to learn more on determining the number of exits required and travel distances allowed, check out Archie Corner episodes 13 and 29. Using our example, since we have a B occupancy, the maximum occupant load we are permitted to have and still be okay with one exit is 49. Since we only have nine occupants in our mezzanine, we are okay with just having one exit. But just to make sure we cover this, be mindful that the distance to the exit from the mezzanine should be a maximum of 100 feet. If we exceeded that maximum, we would need to discuss the maximum common path of travel distance allowed and provide two exits. In a mezzanine, that could potentially require two stairs. Now, we're almost wrapped up guys, just a few little things left. IBC code section 1009.1 titled Accessible Means of Egress Required, has an exception which is what we are interested in. Exception number one. It reads, One accessible means of egress is required from an accessible mezzanine level in accordance with section 1009.3, 1009.4, or 1009.5. We are not going to go into the details, but in short, 1009.3 states that we can use a stairway. 1009.4 states that we can have an elevator, and finally, 1009.5 states that we can use a platform lift. For more detailed information, you can read the desired section, but the point is that any of those three would meet the requirement of exception one. Interestingly enough, as a side note, IBC section 1009.3.1 states that exit access stairways that connect levels in the same story are not permitted as part of an accessible means of egress. However, there is also an exception that reads that exit access stairways providing means of egress for mezzanines are permitted as part of an accessible means of egress. And the last thing that mezzanines are allowed to have, <laughs> drum roll here, for IBC section 1011.14, alternating tread devices. It partially reads, Alternating tread devices are limited to an element of a means of egress in buildings of groups F, H, and S from a mezzanine not more than 250 square feet in area and that serve no more than five occupants. Since our building is a B building, we cannot take advantage of this. And even if our building was an F, H, or S occupancy, our occupancy load is higher than five occupants so we still could not take advantage of this. And we are also over 250 square feet, so no matter how we slice it, we cannot use alternating tread devices. But if we were an F, H, or S occupancy, and we had no more than five occupants, and we had no more than 200 square feet, then we could have an alternating stair device, which looks something like this. And well, guys, that is it you made it congratulations now you know all the basics on mezzanines i hope you like this video i'll see you on the next one but until then
This is Archie Corner signing out.